sound of Astralis, and you can see these Betway odds. They're actually painting a picture that G2 are coming into this what? as the favorite. No, even after winning that map, I don't know about that one. I'd be impressed if they could do it, but looking at the maps of, of New Convertigo, even with Astralis not having Glaive here, you would like to think that they have the grit and the determination and the individuals to take us through. We'll have to see though, Harry. No more speculation. Device is walking through a main smoke. Nexus on the other side, and in the wrong way, he's gone outside. He's got a swap. He's got to go back in. Device getting hounded. Nexus in the back line does get traded by Majisku as a second through that smoke, but in the midst of the madness, it's G2 finding every kill. Majisk does get one. Dupree's drop B with the bomb, and Majisk is on a tear, finally put to rest, and Dupree will plant, but there's a player hunting him down. Amanek is not waiting around, and maybe he should have. Dupree with a chance to kill him, but no, the back line has Jax, and he is quick to the B-bomb site. G2 find the pistol round, and they set themselves up on the CT side. Yeah, looking to continue in their stride, right, with a victory on Dust already under their belt. The momentum maybe leading in favor of G2 in the beginning. And with this pistol round going their way, if they're able to get off to a good start, we could see that continue here on the realms of Nuke. And it's just going to be pistols here for Astralis with the emphasis on a buy in the follow-up round. Nexus is going to hit all of this. Astralis aren't being quiet about their running towards Secret. So Kenny's come on rotation to try and stop them getting down B. But wow, what a shot from Yuki. Sip does follow. Nexus falling as well. And oh, it looks like he could get out of hand. But G2 do manage to put it under lock and key. 2 0 lead. And the Ecos make quick work of. A couple of kills, though. That's certainly going to make uh, this buy a little bit prettier for Astralis. And they've got full AKs anyway. Not even really a bonus round because G2, they lost the SMGs in the last and they've got full, SM, uh, full rifles here, in, including Famuses. Stratus go back to yard though with one man in the lobby. Oh, and with these outside smokes, Magisk does cross and get down towards B. Two sets of rotations have come down for G2, but Astralis, they've done this all as a bit of a ruse, and they actually have their eyes set over here towards Heaven and Hell. Amanek has just dropped down, and that there, this has given Astralis a way in. This could actually get a little bit risky now. They lose any info outside. Kenny's not even oh. considering this wrap. And that's Kenny removed. Ramp now belongs to Astralis. And this rotation from Amanek out of heaven couldn't have come at a worse time. Jax didn't even really seem like he knew where he should be looking there. As he's got a lot of angles to bear in mind. This B site belongs to Astralis and in a very big way. Hunter and Amanek on for the retake, but they're two on four. Their backs are against the wall and a bomb is now down for Astralis as well. Yeah, they just run down the vent and, and do at least kill Majisk and get guns, but past that point they can't stop the plant and Astralis is holding on to secret Amanek well he doesn't survive the round and Dupree will find three in it so great work from him with the entries Astralis getting on the board nice and early in this game not letting G2 make a bit of a streak happen and the, the you know, important factor is with Astralis winning their first rifle round because G2 had to you know spend money on reinvestments coming into that round well they can't fully afford and they've got a force as a solo M4 is all they've got to work with alongside the auto shotgun of Jax. Strauss putting the standard pressure on towards A. Molly and Main made in the door. Just trying to keep Kenny late to this position. Strauss throwing more outside smoke. So it's just going to be default to this every round because it's so effective at getting control. Even if you don't commit behind it, you can just send one player there. And Magis can be so useful here. Looking towards Seeker and trying to spot one of these G2 players poking their head out top, but Hunter's pushed back by the Molotov. Meanwhile, an A-take. Pistol's out for G2, and there's not many of them in play. Only one man on the A site, and he's been removed very early. Hunter drops that lurk outside, but G2 have already lost top, and they've got to come in for a retake with no kit, and only just starting to retrieve weapons. Kenny grabs that gun from a gist, and let's see if G2 attempted in. Oh, Zipnix up on top of the hut, laying down the pain, helped out by Dupree. 
This one's not going to go amiss for Astralis. It's another round up on the board and another one where only two players survive for G2. Now, uh-oh. <laughs> That's a little bit awkward. Oh, dear, Hunter. He doesn't get away. Yugi also up on T-Roof alongside Dupree. These two, man. I, I feel like I'm always seeing Dupree and Yugi together. I feel like Dupree's been, like, left in charge of him. Even thinking back to that little uh, photo shoot with the... Well, I think it was like the Crown Prince of Denmark hanging out with Astralis. It was Dupree and Yugi. So both in and out of the server, Hugo. They're looking like good buddies. You'd love and that's to see gonna that. help. Brothers in arms. And well, you need a good rapport if you want to play at the top level with each other, that is. Teamwork is a must in the Astralis camp. And they have mustered more of that. 2-2 right now. They've broken G2 with just that saved AK. Going to try and contact walk ramp with some of these P2Ks. But yeah, Astralis are ready for this. They are waiting in the wings. The Vice flashed out. Has to shoot, but can't control. He doesn't know where they are. He doesn't know where he is. The pistols have somehow found a couple of kills. But Zip with a spray to save the day. Three from him. Dupree dinked. And so is Kenny. Tagged down to 20. This is a mess. Dupree's going to get it out of there with a bomb. He'll have to go back towards spawn. Luckily, there's no issue with time. Let me just work a pick here. and uh, Maybe Astralis can close this round. But G2 have disappeared. I love this call from Dupree. Falling back into T-spawn of all places, right? I think Amanek is going to start to consider that he's, he's wrapping outside. And that is not the case. Dupree is actually hidden right here under Amanek's nose. But Amanek is playing this in a good spot as well. I don't know if Dupree is going to swing wide enough to check this, oh. and he's not going to. So the bomb is now dropped. Magisk is coming in on a lobby wrap. And Amanek waiting. Oh, this is the grossest position ever. No one ever checks it. No one's ever ready. And G2 with only pistols to their nave. They find that round. They get a third on the board with the lobby crunch. It's a bit of a classic. And you thought Zipnix had done enough with this stellar spray transfer, but no, not quite. Yeah, G2, what a massive eco round. How the hell do they do it, Harry? I don't understand how G2 so consistently win these eco rounds with nothing. They did it multiple times back on Dust2. Their first two rounds were, or, or, or two rounds that weren't separated, at least on CT side, Dust2 were ecos in the same vein. So, Stralis lose some money, and they will have a reinvestment. The Vice's orb gone immediately. Kenny is quick. He's not even looking at them, and he's still firing off kills. Four for Kenny. Blinking, you miss it. This round is done. Astralis, oh my. They're made to look like fools by Kenny S. And G2 just a kill away from the fourth round. There it is. It's the ace for Kenny with the AWP as well. He picks it up, and he knocks him down. Oh, vintage stuff. Wouldn't want it any other way. Look at this stuff from Kenny. Look at the second kill. Barely even looking at him. Oh, oh, is this going to happen, Harry? Are we in a world where G2 are going to 2 0 Astralis? Someone wake me up. Pinch me. I mean, I just tried to. And yeah, you, you yeah, didn't surprise me enough. well to it. I know you're touching me, Harry. Let's see, man. He's. Uh pinching every penny in this round he's got himself the orp in hand and he's out here outside looking to make a bit of a ruckus is kenny s i see kenny give us something stylish again i know asking for it back to back is a little bit cheeky but they're only pistols in this one and kenny second kill in the round come on number three oh, oh. <laughs> maybe not device with his deagle Rings out a Ooh. shot. There's the response from Hunter. He's not too thrilled about what devices Deeg has brought to the table. And so Hunter gets it back under control. Zipex in a 1v4. Probably just left to do the honorable thing here. And that is take that fight and go down fighting. Fifth on the board now for G2. 5-2 up. Reinvestment on the cards for Astralis. But this is already a great start from the G2 squad. Yeah, and, and if you think about how much Astralis default to outside control right and, and love to take, you know, the yard with these deep main smokes and, and garage smokes that lets you cross really wherever you want in the yard. Well, Kenny is firing off with the AWP and he if he continues in this position, Astralis is going to have a really tough time getting it done. So nice, uh, nice to see Kenny is certainly feeling it. But next is in the garage. Back to a more standard setup now for G2. They don't often run the AWP outside. They like to put Kenny in on the ramp a lot. Right now he's on lower, so 
interesting change here for G2. He watches the vents for some time. He's checking to see if Astralis have gotten anyone through that main smoke. You can see there's no main player in this round. And G2 gambling with two on the A site. Kenny has moved from B to Secret. He can stop this outside path here as Astralis tried to cross. Secret Molotov and smokes wide again means Nexa can fight once the garage one is faded. He doesn't need to fight though. He's more about getting information from this position, coming whether Astralis have control of main or can get towards hell. So he's just going to tuck in and look to be annoying, be a nuisance in the back line as he smokes fade. Ooh, that's the bomb dropped by Nexa. He gets the info that it's out here in Garage. Dupree, while he does trade it, he is now stuck in the Garage. And with only one smoke to get him out of this Hello. position, there is a potential danger lurking around the corner. And that danger is from this man, Kenny. With this AWP coming up through Secret, he hears players scoping on in. He knows that they're here somewhere. And there is a man holding on to this position. That man is Yugi. The rest of Astralis getting up into heaven, and we've seen this oh, work for wow. them before. There's a double CT vent set up with Kenny ready to rotate up as well. This is an interesting little layout from G2, but they are more than ready for this heaven split. They are so primed, so ready to go. And Amanek takes matters into his own hands. My goodness, the double CT vent stack of him and Hunter nets yeah. all the kills needed in that round there. And G2. I mean, you know, when, when when we saw Astralis attempt that heaven play initially, they weren't ready for it. You know, the first time we saw Astralis bring that out, if you remember, Amanek dropped out of heaven, they conceded the control, Astralis ended up wrapping into ramp, and then they took the round. This time, though, they are so ready. They know what's going on. Amanek does rotate out of heaven, but it's to set up double at the CT vent and to just hold for that split play into the A bomb site. That was a great read from G2 and a great adjustment to something that they weren't ready for just rounds ago. So some problems, some cracks now starting yeah. to show for Astralis. Definitely, I definitely agree. I think, you know, when Astralis are going for that outside wrap to heaven, it was so telegraphed, right? The players who are climbing outside, when you climb that heaven building and you don't take the ladder, you want to be quiet, right? You don't want a hell player or a ramp player or even an A player to hear you. So. You're meant to be silent, but they were very loud. They were not hiding that. And because Jax had hell, he's calming that information to G2. The rotation we get there is Kenny coming up the vents. And even though he doesn't provide a whole lot, just him being in the site was another man that Astralis had to deal to uh, deal with. While they focus on him with that double CT vent setup, it wreaks havoc. And G2 knew the lobby was clear. That's the only way they could have afforded to run that. Otherwise, a Molly could have killed both CT players. Kenny, come on, man. That's a smoke. You can't see through smokes. You don't know they're there. Stop shooting them. Leave him alone. Well, Yugi up on top of red. It's just him and Zipnix left. And there are players everywhere, including a double stack pushing up through secret that no one is ready for. Seven on the board for G2. And my oh my, is this CT side looking great. Kenny is really starting to exert a bit of a presence in the server as well. Outside is just belong to him round after round, whatever he's rotated in from this ramp hold. Reinvestment through for Astralis, not featuring a single orb. There's not going to be anything on device to go toe to toe with Kenny without here outside rather. See Hunter running the gauntlet, picks up the wow. pace, and that is a huge kill to find. Man advantage taken. G2, they're looking so confident right now. What we often see though is a team can start like this. Oh, Ooh, no. that's a bit is of a shame. He got team damaged. Amanek shot him coming through the smoke, and next they got all confused. Amanek, now you've got to make up for that. You've got to have a hold. You've got to do right by your team, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's delivering. Does put up two, but it might not be enough. It's all on Jax now, and he's removed Magist. They know that Zipex was last seen inside of this A bomb site. And so he is going to get the bomb planted. It's down to a 1v1. Jax versus Zipex. And Zipex so often a man that we can rely on in these clutches. And that continues to hold true for Astralis. A third on the board. And a round going their way, finally, after a long hiatus away from victory here on the T side. Yeah, a crucial round as well. And I mean, Amanek really puts up a hold, Harry. You ask him to do it and he gets a double at least, but it didn't seem to be enough. 
Jax are unable to close out the 1v1 versus Zip. And G2, at least they have all the money in the world, right? They had players on 12k coming into this round. So why isn't a problem right now, but they don't want Astralis to build upon that one round win. Kenny is outside. He's so blind, but he's about to peek with the Orc. Dupree deletes him. Great shot from Dupree. Astralis running right down outside towards B. Next to his, all of this, though. Hunter's already begun a rotation, and Jax is in the lower secret as well. This is a heavy setup for G2. A crossfire, in fact, to Jax. He has made them cross indeed. Hunter with another. Next are on the flank. Three on two. Back up vent they go. Astralis want the A site, and it is open for the taking. Oh, with Zipex up on top of the hut, this main position is a very, very tricky one to get back into for G2. Flash goes in. That's going to telegraph. This is where they're looking to take. Dupree has this crossfire set up. Man Ooh, does get up sorry. through the vents. That's Amanek, and he didn't spot Dupree back in the lobby. Zipex removing one, now falls back into the hut. This bomb planted. So they have to swing wide. They have to go into the site. And the Molly's coming late. G2, they just stick the bomb. They win the round on the back of it. And even though Dupree gets all the kills, it's the stick for G2 that wins them the round. It's not every day that you see Astralis lose a round like that. And it's not every day that you see G2 prioritize defusing the bomb. So really a two for one in this round. <laughs> Oh dear. And yeah, you can see the player that comes out of the hut as well. I think it was Zip. He checks close right. And, and you know, it doesn't feel important in the moment just to clear that corner. But if he didn't, he would have been out in the site faster. He may have even stopped that defuse from happening. So that one second check, it, it holds your weight and well, weighs down on the chest of Astralis. Three rounds in this map. That is it. And a map down in the series as well. Dust 2. Not a huge surprise to see G2 win it, right? Like, but Nuke, I mean, this is a whole different ball game right now. Good timing for Astralis. He catches Jax with a nade out. He has to drop with a Molotov. Kenny giving room to peek, and he does fight with the orb, dropping one. Amanek trades for a single kill, and Jax comes back up from the ramp. He's only here temporarily because it's a lobby fight that will get it all done. Hunter's mollied off the bomb, and now Jax can continue to wreak havoc, and G2 are just bringing aggression everywhere Astralis try and fight. G2 have three different crossfires. This has been such an excellent CT side, and Astralis have not had answers. Majisk, one or three, got to do it all here. He doesn't even begin to know the whereabouts of G2. They're just going to peek him from the ramp and clean it up. Six, sorry, nine now, rather. I'm not giving them enough credit. Plus, like, fair play to get confused, right? Nines are just sixes that are the, uh, the other way up. Yeah, upside down. Call out a standing ovation, and that's what G2 deserve right now, okay? They are looking real good. Thank you very much, Hugo. Everyone always says that clapping down a microphone sounds great. Yeah, and that's encouraged. So let's uh, let, <laughs> let's see how this round goes. Jax has opened up with a kill on the Zipnix and taken them out advantage for G2. A five on four out of the gate up against this, this partial investment from Astralis. There's four smokes. That is more than to get you over outside. They're going to go ahead and throw these ones deep. These aren't the traditional, you know, full at red, go for the cross into secret smokes. These are the deeper ones that allow you this opportunity to either take garage, go secret, duck into main through the left of the smoke. They give you a lot more options. And with these pistols, I'm sure Astralis are going to appreciate the closer range. I never trust Kenny, man. I never trust no. him when they're crossing the smoke. I, I just... Ooh, oh, he saw it. Yeah, oh, he did, he but it. they just get down. They just got down secret. Luckily enough, Kenny gets that info for Nexa. And so he's no longer like waiting for a peak before he drops that smoke. He gets it down early and now Astralis have got to go through it. Oh, here they come. There's a second player in the vent as well. Nexus firing off and he's connecting shots, but the flash is so good. Both players blinded. Hunter has to let them pass, but he can still stop them from getting the plant. That's if Jax doesn't do it first. He's already doubled up. Hunter opens the door and Kenny closes the round. It's G2 all over the scoreboard. 10 to three, storming through this game. And I don't understand what's going on. Like, this is a great match from G2, but Astralis have had really nothing to show us on this T side. I mean, losing Glaive, of course, is, is always going to be a problem. And, and these are those games where you maybe just don't have the answers. You don't have the solutions. Your game plan isn't working. You haven't had back-to-back -back rounds. This is when you want Glaive back. Yeah, and you know, this is the thing. These, these are the situations that Astralis are going to have to get used to dealing with and, yeah. and, and adapt to dealing with, uh, with 
A, Glaive's continued absence, and also, you know, moving into like a seven-man roster project, right? Now Astralis are playing on the same field as everyone else, right? Without like an auto AI generated in-game leader that just tells you where the enemies are <laughs> playing. Yeah. Glaive's like, go B. Okay, B's clear. But no, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of mad. No, man, and it's great as well, because I think this three-month period is really going to show people just how important having a, a like a, a good IGL and having like a refreshed IGL in particular uh, can Ooh. be for a team. Now, that's a nice lineup for Yugi. He's really done a lot of work in this round. Kind of just talking over it, because this should be a fourth on the board for Astralis with the kills going down the way they did. And so Astralis get that fourth on the board. But yeah, it's great. I don't think there's ever been like an opportunity in this same way uh, to like see how much one player can bring to a team. Cause not like the, the nearest example you could maybe even look at would be someone like, or most recent would be maybe be like a Steeko in Mouse Sports back when they like yeah, took him in and out example. of that roster, right? Maybe there's like a link there, but you know, with Glaive, he is still the IGL of this team. He is still coming back. And so for these three months, we get to see how Astralis would look without him. And are, are they able to adapt to reach a level near where they were, or maybe even go up beyond it, which, Seems wild to think of that being yeah. a possibility. And, and, and I'm not, not saying it would be, but it's going to be like a fun experiment to see what happens. And, and not just the fact that we get Glaive leaving this team, we get to see what Astralis are like without Glaive. We get to see what Astralis are like when Glaive comes back. Like, you know, I imagine Glaive's not going to re return to pro play until he's ready. And that's, and you know, that's what we want. We don't want Glaive coming back until he's ready. And when he is ready, well, he could be bringing, you know, a whole new level to Astralis, like you said. So, yeah, I, I think ha him coming back to the roster is such an exciting talking point. And obviously the questions of, well, where, do Yugi, where does Yugi go after that? Does he stay? Does someone buy him out? Is he going to prove himself in these three months? So many questions for Astralis, but let's get back to the game. So four on three at the end of the half, and Kenny, he wants to close it with 11. He might just be able to do so. This bomb is all that remains in the back of Yugi. He's walking into Kenny S, and Kenny... And as I said, your eyes, they're not deceiving you. 11 to 4 right now. G2 with a very, very big lead here. They are looking good moving into their T, sorry, their T side of play. Yes, and while we just saw the Betway odds there, leaning in favor of the G2 squad even more so, and I think justifiably yep. so, perhaps yep. unsurprisingly so. And it's a B-Rab play to kick it off. It makes some magic. Oh, <laughs> get out! Get out of Rap G2! Astralis, they get it done in a matter of moments. Magis with three, Device with a double. And that is the fastest pistol round I think I've ever seen. My word. That is mad. <laughs> if Astralis were ever going to pull a game back, Harry, I think that pistol round, that might be it. That might reinvigorate them. That, that might set them up. It certainly deletes some of this buffer, right? A full eco from G2 and a chance for Astralis to just basically start this half at 6 11. That's something. That's better than the first. Oh my, I'm reeling after those shots. Magisk and Device give us an absolute massacre. No other way of putting it. Grenades up silo do limited damage. G2 are looking for anything they can get in this round. They've spent zero dollars and likely will receive zero dollars. Other than the loss bonus, of course. I'm, I don't think Glock kills are an expectation of this round with three rifles for Astralis and two SMGs to make it clean. And lucrative as well, don't get me wrong. Oh, okay, maybe there will be kills. Astralis is just swinging into the uh, hands of G2. Magist with a double. Device, same story. Actually finds three. It's Astralis taking the round with a single death. That's not a worry. Now G2 come in with guns. And it's the moment we've all been waiting for, Harry. Four rounds on the T side for Astralis. Was that enough? Are G2 going to be able to find five? That's what they need. Go ahead and try and deny these outside smokes with this molly, and that has left him a little gap. But G2, they're not ready to give an edge like that to Astralis. They throw a third smoke down, and that's going to enable the cross. Device will put up one, but Jax comes in with the response, and we're into this four on four. Now it's like a bit of an awkward nether zone over here towards outside. No one's like really sure how they want to play this in Astralis. They'll try and regain control. They try and send a man up into heaven just to get the info. And the risk you run with that is exactly what's happened. And that is that he falls. And now this outside problem goes from bad to worse. It's no longer a problem that you don't know anything about. 
Now it's a problem you don't know anything about and one that's actively getting worse. That much you do know. Amonek's going to set up over here in heaven, but he's not going to go peeking on in. Now he does have the bomb. That's something to bear in mind here. This is going to kind of force G2 to have to commit to an upper play. Alternatively, they can try and get him out. He can throw the bomb down and they could look to hit ramp. But I don't think G2 want to overcomplicate this very much. They're going to wait. They're going to bide their time. And now that they've rendezvoused over here in heaven, they're going to try and split this A-bomb site together. The last G2 saw lower, there were two Astralis players in secret. And so that's why G2 won this top site, I can assume, right? The smoke nade combo that, that went down in the stairs area. It's not going to be the same now, though. Astralis come back into this top site. That's a good effect. Double kill from Dupree. Make it a third and a fourth. Just shut them all down, Dupree. Whatever. Forget counting. The numbers aren't interesting him. The kills certainly are. Seven rounds for Astralis, though building and building and building into this game, Harry, three in a row. And that's the thing, I can just never count them out. Like no matter how how good G2's T side could or can be, it's Astralis on the other side, on the favored CT defense of Nuke. Like this is gonna be a hard half for G2, even if they are gonna win it. Device primed, ready, raring to go, but I say that, and then obviously he gets 1D. <laughs> That's just going to fall into place, though. Continues to lay down the pain outside. And actually, as I say that, though, he does die immediately again. Jack so I'm going to I'm gonna stop saying players' names yeah. because then Jack seems to just kill them. Uh, Amanek now. <laughs> <laughs> He's it considering there. it. to see if I can get it to work again. Uh, no, apparently not. Let's see, Astralis, they're gonna send Dupree up through lower. Cool head on his shoulders and an AK in hand. Jax, please don't ruin this one for me. I've set it up, everything's here. It might all fall into place. And Dupree trying to catch wind oh, of what's going no. down outside, but what? somehow they've all gone by each other. They have missed each other like ships in the night. And my word, now they go down secret and, and, and Astralis don't know. They, they have no idea. This is where Dupree just came from. He just cleared outside. This is not telegraphed. There's, there's no way that you know this is happening if you're Astralis. And so this B site can just have a bomb plant go down no problem. A G2 can start setting up for a three on three in the post plant. It's insane how close that timing was. It wasn't the fact that they were just hiding behind the box. They were walking as Dupree was and they were like circling round and around the red box, round that object and, and just not getting to see each other. Crazy stuff. They don't know how close they got either, but they will get a bomb plant on this B site. Zipex looks to burn the player out from uh, the position and he will do so. Getting the kill on Nexa, no cover for G2 and I'm surprised at that. I feel like Amanek definitely could have tried to help his teammate out there. Instead it's Jackson lower. Oh, little deed from him. Amanek follows up, he's killed that ramp player. Yugi in a clutch, that has to be fast. He sees the legs, but it's the head that gets removed. Jax has looked incredible in the T side. Not just a, a big opening kill on device into, into the yard in their first rifle round, but right there, four kills, big openers. Bang, bang, gets a rifle, closes out the round. So excellent work from Jax. Makes it happen for G2 on a lower Connery round on one that Astralis should have, you know, certainly had. And yeah, hey, maybe his grenades aren't good, his flashes are, well, his kills also as he entries G2 to a 12th round and breaks Astralis' money early. I think that's probably the biggest detail, right? If Astralis found that rifle round and then uh, took the anti-eco and then, you know, started to build and took a few rounds and cleanly as well as they were, Astralis would have loads of money and G2 would be constantly having to win, you know, two or three rifle rounds to break that economy. That's what can be so hard on the T side. But because Astralis didn't take a, a, a strong lead, they only took three rounds, and they lose to an eco, well, they're broke now. And this means G2, it's only going to take a couple of rifle rounds to potentially win this series two and zero. Uh-oh. Oh, fast A play. And Yugi not ready at all. He gets blindsided. It's Kenny with the double opener. And uh, it might just have to be the save already out of the gate. Hugo, you're bang on. That, that threat now becomes even more real as uh, Astralis just have to go and forego this round. 13 now on the board for G2. No money left for Astralis. And that grim picture you painted looks like it could become a reality if G2 keep this up.
sneaking out the lobby. And five alive for G2. It's certainly a fast day play that will leave Astralis wondering. No Molotovs to throw down in that hut, or at least none were thrown down in the hut. They have one on Zipix and they'll save it as well, but you know, not in the right position to do so. And if you don't get those mollies down, well, look, Kenny just runs out the hut with no issue, no contest, and two kills on the max end, just darting around the back of the site to put G2 three rounds away from a victory here in this group. Now, it is worth noting that, yes, this is a group stage game. Three out of four of the teams here in each group go through, and Astralis is still holding 2-0. They are still top of the group. Even if G2 win this, you know, Astralis are... It's not the end of the road. Like, they're still at the top of the group, right? In head-to-head, -head, they'll lose, and they'll come second, but... Um, you know, it's not like this is anything close to elimination for either of these teams, at least not for Astralis. G2, this kind of is a must-win, and... With North already out of the picture, G2 want to get as high as they can inside of this group. Kenny opening up into the door. Ooh, Yugi's got a tap, and he's finished off the jump on Nexus. Started by Device, but I mean, this round is coming to a close already, unless someone could do something incredible. Device trying to stop Kenny. Hunter's going to go through the hut, though, as he fires a shot. And Zip is very loud on the ladder. That's no surprise. Hunter with a double, and G2 with 14. This is looking like easy for them, Harry. There's nothing getting in the way of G2, but this one rifle round for Astralis. Yeah, so this is either where the Danes really do just kick it up a notch and start to grind their way back in, or this is where the series could just draw to a close with G2 taking it in a 2-0 fashion. Let's see which one of those realities we end up living in early on. Some outside presence, but the bulk of G2 here in lobby, wow. they hold for the push, and Kenny primed and ready to go. He's pretty much already done enough in this round, and that's scary. You try and lobby crunch, you try and hit them where it hurts the most, and okay, well, all right, Magisk, you know what? I was trying to do this whole doom and gloom angle, but actually, he might have just saved the day. Yugi coming in with another, and now we're into this two on two. Magisk has oh. salvaged this round, and Device, with five points of health finding that kill, has now made it look like a real possibility here. Amanek with 100 HP. He does have that going his way at the very, very least. But the bomb not in his possession. And both of these players, nothing more than question marks. They knew where they were earlier, but that has changed since. And Amanek does manage to deal with the first. Device, five points of health to try and keep the dream alive for Astralis. Oh, no. He could wallbang him. Amanek realizes he doesn't want the UMP. Device has been so good in these clutch situations for Astralis, and that needs to continue now more than ever. Amanek needs to land, but one bullet. Now, might elect to not even have to give that a go. He drops a smoke on the bomb. Device is trying to play a little one way, and oh, oh, just about. Device so close, but not close enough. It's Amanek securing the 1v2. Match and series point for G2, loaded in the chamber. And just five kills away from firing it off and taking this series over Astralis 2-0. That would be mad, wouldn't it? Like, you know, G2, who just got absolutely dumpstered by Astralis the other day in the final of RTR. Like, they got, what, six rounds on Nuke by the end of things? Uh, this is nothing like that game. They got eight rounds in a best of five, Harry. Eight rounds in a best of five. And... Right now, Astralis might just fall to them. Yeah, and you know, obviously it's with the caveat that, that Glaive isn't here and that you yeah, start the game, but it's like, you know, I, I think it's such a cool thing to look at because you think about how one-sided and how dominant that, that best of five grand final was. Once again, bit of a caveat by that in that it was like more of a best of four, yep. but still, you know, eight rounds across the entire thing for G2. This just shows how important a man like Glaive is to this squad and how the IGL role is not something that you can just pick up and dominate with overnight. Yeah, but G2... You know, I, I think this is like an important, you know, growing time for Astralis. This is, you know, and, and they didn't come into this event saying, oh man, we're still going to be sick. We're still going to be beating everyone. They knew it was going to be hard. They knew it was going to be a challenge. And well, this series just serves as a testament to how big a challenge it might end up being. Uh, one final sh uh, shot, one final chance for Astralis here. 
Magis has at least found one, but it's a double opener towards BG2. Oh, gonna go back up the vent towards A. I love this. They do it all the time. What a great call. They know Astralis are double stacked. They've seen Magis can be, and Zip was there as well, although they weren't aware. It was the guessing game, and G2 will guess right. 20 seconds, the bomb planted, and Astralis a two on four to retake against match point. G2 about to 2 0 Astralis even dominantly on Astralis' map pick as well, right? To think the Dust 2 is 13 rounds for Astralis, all for this to happen. Jax, a kill away. Majisk might give it to them. Nice shot on the scout, but a one-on-four is not going to 